I mess it up, it's only like a $800 GPU down the drain, so no pressure, right? Hey, what's up guys? Mike Red Fox here. In this video, we're gonna to attempt to add thermal pads to my Gigabyte Eagle RTX 3080. So this GPU is thermal throttling. If you've been following my channel at all, you know that I had this one in the garage for a while in really cold temperatures, and that was helping prevent any thermal throttling, and I was getting almost 100 mega hash out of the GPU. But when I have multiple GPUs and an FPGA in the garage, the temperature rose and uh, the ambient temperature in there got too warm, so it started thermal throttling again. So I figured time to really take it apart, add thermal pads, and see if that will help. So let me show you what I'm seeing in the software here. Uh, so you can see right now, this is the RTX 3080. I have it power limited to 61%, which should give it about 225 watts. I have the core clock all the way down, and I have the memory clock all the way down with the fans locked at 100%. In the minor, it is GPU 3. Uh, you can see it's doing 82 mega hash right now, and it's doing that 225, 226 watts that you see there. When it thermal throttles, what you'll see is that wattage will start dropping from where I have it locked. Over in hardware info 64, you can see the memory temperature now is at 108 degrees Celsius. And you can also see when we go down that the performance limit thermal is currently no. So that means that it's not throttling, but you'll see what happens once I even just return this memory clock back to stock at zero. So remember 225 watts. And they're already, already just changed over to thermal throttle, yes. So even just running it at stock settings, it's gonna thermal throttle here. And you can already see the wattage just drop, 209 watts. And as far as the temperatures of the memory, I mean, 110, there it is, 110. I think that's the point that it starts to thermal throttle based on what I've seen. Um, and so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this GPU apart we're gonna add some thermal pads to the back plate. I wanna see what kind of oil is happening in there, maybe clean it up a little bit, and then we'll do the same exact test and see if the performance has changed and see if it's still thermal throttling. All right, so this is the RTX 3080 I got here, and it's time to get it open. Starting with the back plate, so we got Four screws here. I'm using a double zero Phillips head. Looks like that's probably the right screwdriver for all of this. Um, if this is your first time doing this, definitely keep track of the screws that you're going to have to put back in. Alright, so we got those four. Yeah, there's two smaller ones here. So we're going to take those out. Yeah, you don't want to be in a place where you're putting this thing back together and you don't know what screws go where. Um, we got one here. So let's go ahead and take that out. And then probably this one as well on the other side. Okay, what else? Um, looks like we got two over on this side. There's one. There's two. Okay. I think that's probably all the screws. So what I'm going to try to do is add thermal pads between the memory and the back plate. I have three millimeter. You can see there. It should be the right ones. And I'm really curious, so this thing's been running, I don't know, maybe like a month or so. I'm really curious to see what the inside of this uh, looks like. Especially as I feel like the thermal throttling has gotten even worse over time. All right, so that should loosen it up. And then there's gonna be some cables we're gonna have to detach. There we go. So what do we got here? We got, let's see. So these are probably 
probably the fan cables. I don't know if you can see that. So there's the two fan cables right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect those. Just pull very gently. This one's kinda tricky. There we go. And then there's one other cable right here. Wow, look at all that oil. I don't know, let me see if I, let me connect, disconnect this one and get a little closer to the camera. Uh, let me show you what I'm seeing on this GPU. Look at all of that oil. I don't know if you can see it, yeah, you see that? Look at all of that. It's just pooled on there, on all of the memory, GPU itself, PCB just absolutely everywhere. So I'm gonna clean all of that up and then re-thermal paste the chip itself. And then let me get this backplate off because that's where I have to do most of the work. So let's go ahead and do that. So looking like uh, one, two, three. Yeah, three Phillips screws right here. And if you haven't also seen the inside of um, this GPU yet, what's really interesting is how they did these power connectors. And I'll show you that in a second once I get this off. Okay. So what you can see here, so you can see the two eight pins, right? And they're going over this little, these two cables connecting to the, the board itself, um, which I think is, is actually really interesting from a repairability standpoint. Go ahead and disconnect this. Um, because if something happened to one of those ports, you know, this part, I'll show you again. This part itself, you can see just two screws holding it in, and this can come right off, and you can replace it. So, pretty cool design. All right, uh, so let's take a look here. So yeah, uh, let's clean up that oil, and then you can see the memory is these four, four, and those two over there. And they should also correspond, you can see on the back plate there, well, the uh, rear of the PCB there. So what I think I have to do is I have to add here, here, yeah, here, and here, right behind those. And hopefully it helps dissipate the heat that's building up there and prevents it from thermal throttling. So let me clean it up and then we'll get going. All right, so the next step then is we're going to figure out the thermal pads uh, to go on the back here. If I mess it up, it's only like a $800 GPU down the drain, so no pressure, right? So I'm gonna go like right. <laughs> Uh, I guess like right here, it's probably good. Man, all right, and then this one. And throw like right here. We'll check on the other side, let's check on the other side. Make sure I know what I'm doing here. Uh, yeah, that's uh, a little bit over. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Yep, other one's looking good. Okay, and then we got one here. So right there. Okay, and then the other one is 
right here. Yeah. So they're on the same side. Okay. They're on different sides. But they're not. Alright, so let's get this back plate back on. Okay, next step. Thermal paste on the chip. So I'm just gonna add, I like adding a dot in the center. And then let it squish down. You could spread it if you like, but it should spread when it adds some pressure. Should be plenty. Let's connect this nightmare cable back in. I hope I never have to take this cable back out as long as I live. All right, RTX 3080 is back in. Let's go ahead and power up the rig and make sure I didn't break it. All right, cool. <laughs> Fans are spinning, that's a relief. Uh, so let's let this boot up and we'll make sure the computer recognizes it. And then we'll start mining with it and see if we improved our situation at all. All right, let's go Windows, do your thing. Okay, we're booted in. We gotta do a couple things. I got to get hardware info opened. Let's do that. Gotta get MSI Afterburner opened. Need to stop my awesome minor remote agent from launching. Okay, and we need to get Phoenix Miner up and running. So what clocks do I have set right now? So I got power limit. Let's get that back down to 61. Let's leave core clock at zero. I'm just gonna get this fan speed all the way up. Just for the sake of this video. I don't, wouldn't typically recommend running it at 100% the whole time. Um, continuously at like 80 I hear is good. All right, there's the 3080, so 30.6. So you just say 30, 30 uh, degrees Celsius. It's, I don't know, uh, yeah. 36 degrees Celsius on the memory junction temperature. Um, all right, let's open Phoenix Miner, let this launch, and then we're gonna see what we get stock. If you guys remember, even stock I was thermal throttling before. Um, so if we don't do that, then I'll be happy, and then we'll see how far we can push the memory overclock. I This card can probably do 900, 950, maybe a little bit more. Um, this one, when I had it in the garage, I, I really couldn't push it as far as I've seen some others get pushed. Uh, even the same GPU, I just may have not got you know the best silicon lottery on this one. But we'll see, we'll get it to like 900 and see if it thermal throttles. That should get me in the high 90s for mega hash anyway at around 225. And I'll tinker with it more afterwards, but we know what it was doing before. And if we can do better than that, then I'm gonna be really happy. All right, so Phoenix Miner is loading up. Here we go. Let me get that to the main screen. Starting up all the GPUs right now. And as it builds the DAG, we should see that temperature go up. Let me make sure I don't blow out my power meter here and have my 3070s power limited, which they're not. That would have totally toasted my 1,000 watt power supply. Um, I don't know, what are these run at? I can't remember. I'm just gonna get them down to 60. Back to 3080. All right, 3080 is at 87 mega hash, and memory junction temperature is 88, climbing 90. It'll probably keep climbing. Shouldn't be thermal throttling yet. Okay, 87. Let's do some overclocks on the memory. Just gonna do 500, see where that gets us. Should get us over 90, I think. So keep an eye on that. Let's see the memory temperature is rising, 96 degrees Celsius. Okay, 89, 91, yep, got us over 90. Memory temperature is 98 degrees Celsius. By the way, ambient temperature in here, 
75, feels a little cooler, but about 75 degrees. Okay, 92.5. Memory junction temperature is climbing 102. So let's see where we end up. 102. Not thermal throttling because you can see I'm at that 226 watts. Mega hash is settled out. We're at 102, so our situation has improved. Now let's just see how much it's improved. I mean, I'm already happy with that because now I can actually get more mega hash out of this GPU. All right, so back to MSI. Let's go 750. So let's see what happens. Our mega hash is going to rise. I'm sure our temperature will rise. There it goes, 106. 93 mega hash. 94.7. Can we get to 95? We did. 95 mega hash. That's pretty that's pretty great. I'm like really happy with that as it is. And we should still be pulling the same wattage here. Wait for it to refresh. Yeah, 225. So we haven't thermal throttled. So I'm gonna say I'm really happy with the results here of just adding thermal pads uh, to the from the back plate touching the, the back side of the memory there. 95. Yeah, we like really settled out 95. Temperature is 106. Uh, I'm just gonna push it just a little bit more. Like I said, this one likes around 900. So let's see where that gets us. So 95, so we're up to 108. Ninety-six mega hash. Ninety-six point six. Still at ninety-six point six. Hundred and ten. So we might be getting in. Oh, want to wait? We might be getting in thermal throttle territory here. Let's take a look down here. Now still says no. I really wish. I knew if that was a good temperature to run this thing at. I know there's been a lot of debate in the community. 96.6, um, so I'm really, really happy with that. I'm gonna call this a success, and I'll tinker with these overclocks a little bit more and maybe boost the power a little bit more. I've seen some of these run good at 225. I've seen others run good at 230, 240. I'm definitely gonna chase that 100 mega hash number. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. Thanks for sticking with me through changing out the thermal pads on this Gigabyte Eagle RTX 3080. Uh, I'm going to call it a success just doing the thermal pads on the back. I'll leave a link in the description to the ones I use in case you want to do this yourself. And we're hitting 96.6 mega hash at 226, 225 watts. Memory junction temperature is going back and forth between 108 and 110. And you can see we are not thermal throttling. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button if you did. Subscribe for more content on GPU mining. And until next time, please take care of yourself. Take care of each other. I'll see you in the next video.